Hello there, and as usual, I'm Aaron from Stand Gamers, and welcome. So today, I want to show you a little bit of research and experimentation I did with kinetic energy weapons. Now, if you don't know what a kinetic energy weapon is, the idea of stored energy being applied to a target, creating maximum sort of devastation. Now, there is many different variants of this. The one that I was researching heavily because I fancied building was something called the Rod of God. Now, the idea of this is a weapon that is mounted on a satellite orbiting a planet and it launches a very strong, solid, metal, tungsten sort of steel based missile and the missile itself has no payload it is just the impact it hits at such a high velocity that it creates a massive crater now there was rumors of the weapon like this being used in china on a shipping yard but it is obviously of course just rumors and no one actually knows if this weapon does exist so the first thing i wanted to do is test out a variety of different objects being dropped from a different height now i originally i moved the speed limit from the actual game itself and this caused the problem of objects actually passing through the ground itself rather than impacting them and causing a large crater so the first thing i want to do is just drop a number of different shapes so for this first test i want to talk about the governing factors of this so the first one is we have mass we can increase the mass quite infinitely in space engineers but the other limiting factor is the velocity in space engineers we can remove the velocity meter but when i was doing this in test it just went straight through the ground and caused no damage at all so we've got to stick to that 100 or so meters a second so we're going to drop this ball that has quite a low sort of mass but at the same time it's going to have the maximum amount of velocity it has so let's see how much damage it does and below i've got this small platform with staggered sort of areas so we can actually see the impact itself as the ball falls towards the earth at its maximum sort of velocity so let's have a look what sort of penetration we've got and you can see we've got the what i call the space engineers effect now due to that ball being quite small it's actually impacted and caused no damage to the target and as you can see the only evidence that i actually hit was if we just have a quick look under some of these layers here you can see that the armor's actually been slightly dinted downwards so it has penetrated but it's just disintegrated as soon as it hits the actual layer so how can we make this work is the question well, we need to add more mass to the object. So how can we do that? Well, we can make a larger sort of steel tube, perhaps, and that'll give us more penetration and stop the ball from completely vanishing, adding mass, and at the same time, adding more damage to the blocks below. So for this second test, we have a solid metal warhead. Now, this one is a lot longer, and the idea behind this being longer means that it should be able to penetrate further because it has a much higher mass and in space engineers we get the effect where the initial blocks disappear when they impact the ground and in this case the initial block will disappear but there's so many blocks behind that that it'll stop it from disappearing completely so let's get down to our target below we've got the armor i'm expecting quite a good bit of penetration from this and you'll notice how it disintegrates on impact and actually penetrates completely through the target so we're starting to develop ourselves a form of bunker buster now look at this look at this now this is quite interesting as well look how the bottom part is disintegrating into the ground and causing a very deep level of penetration now that gives me an idea if we extend it and create more mass on the pole such as this one we can actually create a very deep sort of bunker buster weapon that is very cheap and affordable without spending it on warheads thrusters and so on so let's have a quick look at that now, after seeing the measuring rod fall like that, I think we could actually have a quick mess around with this and we could actually drop a measuring rod ourselves. So I'm just going to pull that off to the side ever so slightly and we'll watch this measuring rod actually go towards the ground. And now I'm expecting a sort of particle cannon effect. Now, if you've ever played CNC Generals, when the beam comes down, we're going to continuously pound the same area with energy as the block above breaks away. So we're going to expect the first block to actually break into the target. Look at that. It's just pounding into it, chipping away the side. We've got two actually there at the moment. The end is breaking. They're chiseling into the ground. Very interesting. Very interesting. This is this is quite... This, how is this even working? I guess it's because the mass above is continuing that block to break. Now, these are not tending to penetrate into the ground themselves as it's breaking away. And it looks like we've lost the velocity and the mass up at the top. And then these pillars are just going to simply fall over. Now, with the larger tube, what we noticed, there was some basic sort of ground penetration. And there was some ground penetration with these before, so then maybe they're a little bit hit or miss. They'll have a larger penetration, and sometimes they simply won't And when these break to the ground. But that is a lot of metal that you're wasting. You can see how it just chisels across the landscape, taking out multiple trees. Definitely not recommended, but it's still cheaper than a lot of these weapons that people are making. This is what, how, how much are each one of these blocks? Should we have a quick look? So we've got five 
And if I just add that measurement to the end of this, for instance, we'll see how many blocks it's worth. So it's a few interior plates, uh, a few construction components, and a steel tube. So it's, it's not really that much. I mean, we could make this cheaper. So if we just have a look at a block, so that's 25 steel that would be wasting. So coming from a more sort of... <sighs> resource management way we're still using many more resources than we actually need to we need to confine this down into a very dense metal that will cause a lot of damage so once again we've got so-called rod of god going directly down towards this target i've used my measuring stick to drop it from the correct sort of altitude now the first time we dropped this it penetrated but due to the speed it just evaporated into the ground itself and let's actually have a look at it in this time so we can see this time it's actually continued punching its way through the target and it's actually punched quite a colossal hole in the ground as well and what i really like about this is how that metal tube is disintegrating you can see a good example of it here look how that tube is disintegrating into the ground but it's still continuing to puncture in it's almost like a particle cannon look at that absolutely beautiful really deep sort of penetration into the ground but we're not getting that large blast wave that the actual weapon system would give off so for this next test i've added a layer of topsoil now the whole idea of a bunker is that it's underground so if it can't penetrate even a thin layer like this and then still cause maximum damage to the target this weapon is completely useless and we may as well go with a standard sort of warhead configuration. At the moment, a standard warhead configuration would be a lot better, but at the same time, we are testing out the kinetic weapon theory rather than adding multiple warheads to our rockets. So actually at the top of our pipe here, we've got our rocket in place and I'm just going to make sure that it's aligned with everything. So let's have a quick look and I believe my character model is actually in the way. So let's just lower that down ever so slightly and we'll drop that from there. So we're in alignment with the actual tower itself and that's going to start going, gain that maximum sort of velocity so it'll have maximum penetration. And then the mass of the actual object itself should do the rest of the work for the projectile. So here we go. It looks like we've got very good penetration into the target. Let's have a look how many layers we actually did. Yes, we got full penetration down to the lower level. The ground level did absorb a lot of the impact of the initial missile. So that's something you're going to have to take into consideration. And remember just how long this tube is when it actually impacts. And it's completely disintegrated when it's done. So that is a lot of steel to waste on a sort of rod of god design. So it might not be the most practical thing. Anyway, that was just a little bit of my research for trying to work out this weapon system today. If you guys have got any comments or theories behind the rod of god sort of weapon system, do let me know. Down